Do you know ball? 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 Welcome, ladies and gents, to Do You Know Ball, episode 17. Crazy. 1-7. Big 1-7. I am one of your hosts, Mr. Deej, and I'm joined with Pap. Yep. Yes, today we got a... a, Yeah, as always, we got a little Mm -hmm. bit of a a large variety of topics today, ranging from, I believe, three different sports, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, am I wrong? I think it's... it's, I'm wrong basketball and baseball today we're just gonna hop right into it i'm gonna take the first topic if everyone's ready get your popcorn get your soft drinks sit down on the couch kiss your parents say you love them let's begin today ipe mizuhara otani's interpreter has been in some hot water lately allegedly he placed nineteen thousand wagers between december 2021 in January 2024, according to the Department of Justice, okay? So for those that don't know, as I said, Ipe Mizuhara, Otani's interpreter from his time with the Angels and for a very short time period with Los Angeles Dodgers, you know, he's apparently been caught red-handed, right? If you think your uncle has a gambling problem, look no further than my boy Ipe here, okay? He's been stealing some of Otani's money. Uh, apparently, Otani says he knew nothing about it. I don't buy it. We're going to get into that. His average bet was $12,800. His winning total bets, $142 million. His losing bets, $182 million, which means his total losses is $40 million. Now, if I'm Shohei Otani, right, obviously these guys are boys. Okay. Every now and then I let my friends borrow a dollar or two. Do I ever get paid back? Not really, but this is different. Okay. How do you not know that just you you lost $40 million out of your bank account? How do you not know that? That there's some fishy going on. The whole story changed. Otani said he knew about it and then switched that he didn't know about it. But then apparently Ipe never did any bets on baseball. So maybe he's just a sports junkie. Maybe he's a secret drug lord. He's a pimp. Who knows? But we have a statement from MLB. MLB's official statement on the matter, per Bob Nightingale, we are aware of the charges filed by the U.S. Attorney's Office against Mr. Mizuhara for bank fraud after a thorough federal investigation. According to that investigation, Shohei Otani is considered a victim of fraud and there is no evidence that he authorized betting with an illegal bookmaker. Furthermore, the investigation did not find any betting on baseball by Mr. Mizuhara. Given the information disclosed today and other information we have already collected, we will wait until resolution of the criminal proceeding to determine whether further investigation is warranted. Now, a new tweet. Not new, but a tweet from Jeff Passan from the government's complaint against Ipe Mizuhara. This one's kind of funny because this is a direct text message from Mizuhara to the bookmaker, okay? Mizuhara texted, I'm terrible at this sport betting thing, huh? LOL. Any chance you can bump me again? As you know, you don't have to worry about me not paying. This guy is crazy. This guy's crazy, man. Absolutely bonkers going out and sending LOLs and and LMAOs and LMFAOs while he's casually stealing $40 million from the best player of baseball at the moment. It's funny, but it, did Otani know about it? That's what I want to get into. Otani 100% knew about this, right? This is his friend. This guy has followed Otani for a long time, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. There's no way Otani didn't know about it. I think Otani is just now trying to save face so he doesn't get banned from baseball permanently. And I think Ipe is just being the most incredible fall guy and he's just taking the blame here even though he is fully responsible but he's not throwing Otani under the bus because keep in mind their stories did change that's about all the information I have on the matter just note that Ipe is a secret drug lord possibly you know I will give him some credit though he you know won 142 million dollars at one point sure did he lose 40 million dollars in total yes but it's impressive that he won $142 million. And I just don't see how Otani doesn't realize that money's being taken from his account like that. I'm going to pass the baton on to uh, my co-host here. So 
Take it away, Pat. All I could really say about this this whole thing is poor poor Otani. I mean, you say you say that he think you think that he uh he knew about it and everything like that, and and he had to have known about it. But what if there's the off chance that he didn't know about it? Then he's an idiot. He hundred percent knew about it. There could be the off chance he didn't know about it. Given that out of the two, the only person that knows how to speak English is Ipe. Um, but then again, gambling is a dangerous world. So, I mean, a lot of, a lot of young people, a lot of young fans tend to get uh, addicted to it. So, I mean, any, but any person could get addicted to, to sports gambling. It's actually a very dangerous thing. So I guess once he got started, he just couldn't stop. And now it's a really big, really big, uh, issue. Um, I don't know. I don't know what MLB is going to do further more in this situation but um i they're gonna protect otani no matter what i mean he he is the golden child golden he is face, the face yeah. of baseball they're not gonna do anything to hurt him so it it'd be kind of it's gonna be kind of interesting to see what they do um going forward and look i think i think if any morsel of truth comes out to the fact that Otani was involved with this. I think he should get some repercussions, maybe a suspension, who knows. But yeah, this is this is uh a crazy thing that was uncovered uh during this the start of this season. Yeah. yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, go, go into yeah. go into basketball world. We're going to we're going to take a break from baseball, we're going to leave the ballpark and we're going to enter the arena for a quick segment. For those of you that clicked on this video, Thank you. In the NBA world, the playoff world, the West matchups are starting to be official, starting to be finalized. In the West, we have the four-seed Los Angeles Clippers. I hope that is right. I should probably fact-check that before I do the remaining parts Go ahead, of fact the check, fact check it. Yeah. standings for the NBA. Fact-check it. I am correct because I'm always right. When am I ever wrong, Zach? I'm never wrong. Mm. Do we want to? No, we're not starting anything. I'm just, I'm just. I'm not, I'm not in a dangerous mood tonight. I, go. I got, I got the arsenal in my back pocket. All right, those of you that clicked on this video, thank you. But now we're gonna talk about what you probably clicked on this video to see. The four seed Los Angeles Clippers are officially versing the five seed Dallas Mavericks in the first round of the NBA playoffs. A lot of people have been talking about it, right? Luca could win MVP this year. That's a debate that we should probably honestly have at a different point in a later pod. We're not going to do it tonight because the MVP race is very close this year. But Luka Doncic is playing like an MVP. Is this the year that he finally beats the Clippers? Is this the year he finally prevails? Let's look at the statistics a little bit, okay? Luka Doncic has played a career total of 28 playoff games, right? Nearly half of them, 13 to be exact, have been against the Clippers. He has a 5-8 and eight record against the Clippers in the playoffs. What are my thoughts going into this series? I think if there is a year Luka Doncic beats the Clippers, I think it's this year, okay? The Mavericks, after the trade deadline, were very hot going on win streaks. The trades they made were honestly very good. Daniel Gafford, P.J. Washington, they fit that mold very well. On top of, you know, Luka Doncic running everything, you have Kyrie Irving. I know his game. I'm very familiar with his game. Unfortunately, I can say that he's a very skilled player. You know, does that core of the Dallas Mavericks beat what the Clippers have? I just don't think so. I think there's too much riding on the Clippers this season. You know, you go out and you trade so much of your assets for James Harden, who you can argue this, in my opinion, undoubtedly made the team much better. And I think he raised that team's ceiling. Maybe not by a ton, but definitely he raised the ceiling. You can say he's been trash. Sure, it's not the James Harden we know, not the James Harden we love, but he's been good for the Clippers. I just think that Clippers team, like I said, has too much on the line. I don't see them losing. I think overall they have the depth, right? You still have, what, Norman Powell, Zubak. You still have Russell Westbrook that comes off the bench for them. You have Mann, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I don't even know. Does Bones Highland plays? Who knows? 
He plays I a mean, little bit, gets a few minutes bit. here and there. Yeah. I just think that the veterans on that Clippers team is just going to prevail. At the end of the day, if Kawhi Leonard is healthy, that's all you really need. You want to run it back, throw it back to Toronto, Kawhi Leonard for a series, for a playoff run? It's over. Anyone that versus that version of Kawhi Leonard is over. Keep in mind, also, Kawhi almost single-handedly beat the Warriors until Zaza Pachulia had other plans. I think the Clippers take this series, although I wouldn't count the Mavericks out. I honestly would send this game to seven. The game. I, 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 I misspoke. I would send this series to seven games. But I just think overall, I think the Clippers have too much on the line. I think they take it. What do you think, Zach? I think it's gonna be a. I think it's gonna be a six game series. I think it's gonna be four to two Clippers. I think I think Clippers have, uh, way too much talent on their roster. And like you said, they got guys like James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and you know wild cards Russell Westbrook. They got better, um, with during this season, especially getting Harden. Um, and Harden's everything. Uh, Harden's everything. Um. The Clippers could have wanted him more. Uh, he's really just a playmaker now. That's what he does. He's not, yeah. but he's also has the ability to drop as many points as any of the top guys in the league at any given time. Um, but right now he's just doing, filling his role and being a playmaker and getting, you know, like 10, 10 points, 10 assists a night and just trying to get the ball around, trying to share the love with the rest of the team. I think it's a, a very talented squad. I just don't see them losing to to Luca and the Mavericks. I agree because the Mavericks it can't just be Luke can't just be all Luca. Luca can't score 60, 60 points each game. It can't just be Luca. Um, Kyrie's got to step up and and contribute uh, just as much as Luca. They have to lead that team because the rest of the team is really role players. You know the Clippers have a lot of. The three main guys being Harden, George, and um, Leonard. And they have a bunch of other uh, star power around them, along with a bunch of role players, role role guys. So when you look at that team compared to the, the Mavericks, uh, it's kind of like apples to oranges because you have these two guys and then the rest of them are just straight role players. So it's got to be a team effort. I wouldn't count Luca out completely because anything could happen. It's the playoffs. It's the same thing for any sport. Whoever gets hot moves on, and mm -hmm. that's just how it is. It doesn't matter what your lineup is looking like. It's just whoever gets hot moves on. So if the Mavericks get hot, they could move on, but I just I don't see um, the Clippers losing this one. It's going to be really, really tough. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna segue back into uh back into baseball. This is something I want to talk about, and we we just found this out earlier today. Before we get into the Astros as a whole as a topic, I want to touch on Kyle Tucker last night, or this might be two nights. Whenever whenever you see it, it was during depending this weekend. on when you're watching, depending yeah. on when you're watching it. Yes, um. It, the the Astros were down twelve to three. It was the top of the seventh or bottom of the seventh. Excuse me, bottom of the seventh with one out, and Kyle Tucker came up with a runner on, and he hit a home run. It was a blast. Don't get don't get me wrong. It was a bomb, but what he I didn't think that he needed to pimp it. I think that was a loser loser kind of thing because of what the Astros are doing. Would you expect the Would you expect the Astros to be actually in last place at the moment, behind the Oakland A's? Well, it's hard to bounce back after you get swept in your opening day series. It is hard. It is hard to bounce back. But dude, I mean, compared to some of these other teams that are doing really well, like the the Pirates and the Tigers and the the Royals. They're all doing better than the Astros, which are undoubtedly have more talent than each and every team that I just named. You know, I mean, you know, I, I never I'm not going to even mention this. Uh, I'm going to mention this. The Mets have a better record 
than the Astros. Doesn't mean they're a better team, but that's kind of I mean, you you spent so much money on having trying to make the one of the best bullpens in the league. Why is this team spiraling out so much? I I don't understand why that's happening. They're 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 literally trash. They're there's nothing else to to say. They have to step up their game. What what's their record, Matt? You do you, do you know their record? What are they like? Five and twelve, five and thirteen. Research. Like yeah, research, research. But this is this is crazy. I, I I did not expect the Astros with the talent they have to be in this position. Even though it's still pretty early on in the season, we got a lot of baseball to be played. What's what's 11. their record? Five and, Five and eleven. Cinco y once. That is that is terrible. That is terrible. But I think again, going back to the Kyle Tucker thing, that was that was a, a loser thing to do. I don't know, Deej, you might have a different opinion than I do, but that was a pretty loser thing to yeah. do. I mean, you're down twelve three. There's yeah. no need to to pimp a home run um when you're down by that much and you ended up losing the game too. It didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. My thoughts. I don't. I don't want to say he's a loser. I don't know the context behind it, but I think it was. I think it was more funny, right? I saw it on my Twitter feed the other day, and I just saw him chuck his bat, and it just kind of gave me the vibes to the Chris Paul meme, where it's like Chris Paul hits a huge three to cut the lead down to forty two, because it's like you know, cool, he did something cool, but it doesn't matter because the game's already over by that point. Um. Also, he's on my fantasy team, so he kind of gets immunity from any smack talk. So I can't really dog on the guy. Because of that, so, um, but no, I, I don't. I mean, I just thought it was funny. I wouldn't call him a loser for it, but I it think was it's funny. a loser, loser thing to do. I mean, I mean, should he have done it? I mean, no. I mean, probably eh. not. Yeah, but like, he shouldn't have it's done funny. it. Funny. It was funny how he did it. It wasn't just like a little flip. He he chucked that bat. He did chuck the bat. He, he chucked, chucked bat. it. It was funny. You're, Yay. you're down. You're already down twelve three. You only made it twelve five. You still lost the game. It was yeah. yeah. I like I like that. I like that little reference to to Chris Paul. I think that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, makes me look at the the situation in a different light. But it doesn't change the fact that the Astros are still bad, really, really bad right yeah. now. They they sold their soul for these last um World Series ring that they got in what twenty twenty two. They sold their soul. Mm. They did everything, and now they all their voodoo magic is gone. I hope. I, I mean, wouldn't they, be surprised if they win the division, though. That could very much happen. They still have pretty much the same squad, if not better, right than than they did in twenty twenty two. They still have, they saw Verlander. Verlander's coming back from the, the. I think that he's making well, rehab assignments. Rehab keep in starts. mind, I mean, they have no pitching. I think they just lost Framber. They did just lose Framber. They did just lose Framber. So their pitching is pretty weak. Yeah, at the moment, bad. They're waiting on Verlander to return. Their bullpen, who everybody, including me, you were the probably the only one that saw I did past this bullpen. But I I thought this bullpen was gonna be pretty fantastic. I thought this bullpen was gonna be one of the best, if not the best in the league. Uh especially pairing Ryan Presley and Hayter in the same yeah, in the same bullpen on the same team. Um, I thought it was gonna be a lot better than it is right now. It's not, it hasn't yeah. been. So they called me a madman when I said well, when when I said that the Ashes did not have the best rotation. I mean, the best bullpen in the league. They called me a madman. I got laughed at. I, I got chuckles. You did. But I see the vision. And when I said the Yankees had the best bullpen in baseball, I got laughs from Yankee fans. Look who's laughing now. I, you will, you know, when you look back on it all, I mean, Ryan Presley and Hater, you could use them on any given night to get any type of save in well, any clutch situation. And you look at the so, team right now, and it's just been really bad. Here's the thing with that, though: people say that you could just use them in the eighth and use them in the ninth, right? Those they're like save guys, right? Those are you guys that when it's a close game, you know, if it's not a close game, you're not going to use them. But you can't do that every night. Sure, they're only pitching for one inning, but their arms going to explode if you use them that often. You have True. to stagger them time over time. And other than those two, their bullpen is terrible. They have no one else other than those two. Sure, it's a nice one-two punch you have in the bullpen, even though I think the two of them have not even really been having great of years so far. Granted, it's only a couple games in, but other than those two, their bullpen is dog water. They have no one. And I saw those flaws. 
and I got called names. But I am a future general manager of the MLB, and I see things that people don't. You do. You do. I do. So why don't you, since you see things that people don't, why don't you segue us into our next topic? Oh, okay, 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 okay. As a Yankee fan, you know, patrolling the AL East at the top right now is very fun. It's getting very lonely up here. You know, I'm looking at the guys below us, and I'm like, come on, show us some fight. Show some fight in here. Show some fight, man. You know, it's it's like it's like I'm like the Braves right now looking down at the NL East. Like, yo, y'all going to do anything? Y'all going to do anything? I know. I we don't just know lost. if that's the greatest analogy. I, I know we just I'm, I'm referencing how bad the Mets are. I'm just going to segue into that. The Mets are terrible. Let me just get into the subject. OK, Jackson Holiday was just called up and he has not been great. The number one prospect in baseball. People expected him to have an immediate impact. And so far, as we record this video, he's 0 for 11 with 7 Ks. Who did he take tips from? Aaron Hicks? I know Aaron Hicks was on the Orioles last year. Did he give him some advice in the minors or something? Jackson Holiday needs some time, okay? Number one prospect in baseball, right? Playing second base, shortstop, whatever the Orioles have him at, right? It's He's got a lot of pressure on him, right? And... No doubt in my mind the kid can handle pressure, but he's got to just kind of warm up to it a little bit, right? Looking at the best shortstop in the American League right now, Anthony Volpe, he was very choppy last season. But this season, he's a whole new hitter. He made adjustments. He worked on his strength and his body in the offseason. Now he's a whole new hitter. Jackson Holiday, I don't know if he's going to have that immediate impact to the Orioles this season, but I guarantee you next season he definitely will at least. Now, the Orioles still have some time to turn it around. A lot of people projected them to win the division, I think myself included. And the Yankees right now, as I said, you know, we're all alone at the top right now. We're waiting for some challengers. We want some fight in these people. Hopefully Jackson Holiday turns it around. But like I said, as of right now, over 11, not great. 7Ks could be better. Mm -hmm. But the Orioles team is good enough at the moment to the point where even if Holiday sucks for the time being, they still have the talent to kind of maintain to be a top team in the American League division. So a little concerning. Hopefully he turns it around because I hate seeing young prospects turn to poop. He's the number one prospect in baseball for a reason. So just give him some time. Orioles fans, you'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's all he needs is is time to adjust. It's it's a it's a tough. He's got a lot of pressure on him. A yeah. lot of pressure. I mean, the the amount of immense pressure to do well immediately immediately make an impact for this squad is insane he had a few rough plays in the infield it's not just it's it's not just his hitting that's been taking a toll it's been his his fielding i mean yes granted he did drop I only, a couple balls yeah yeah i saw the i saw the one where he was going back on it he had his glove out he extended and it just dropped and they scored the other team scored a run Look, it's it's all an adjustment period. Not everybody um is gonna do fantastic coming up. I mean, granted, Volpe has evolved and is doing tremendous this year so thus far and for the Yankees. Is the best shortstop in the in, American League, yes. Okay, but Matt, you can agree with me on this. Even in his beginning portion of his career, when he was first called up, he wasn't that Volpe? Yeah, he struggled. I, I said that, yeah. When he yeah. was first called up, he wasn't great, yeah. but he yeah. worked on it. He's the best shortstop in the American League now. Give him time. Give him time. He still could be very good. The season is still very young. Um, He still could be very good this season, but he's going to need to see more reps. He's going to see need to see more big league arms. You know, it's a big difference jumping from AAA arms to straight to MLB arms. Um. However, I do think that he should have started the season with the Orioles because he was he was red hot in spring training. So I thought it was a kind of an odd move that they sent him down. Um, so I, I thought that he should have been there with them to start start the year because he was hot and everything like that. But, you know, he's only really missed like what, like 13, 16 games, somewhere it's a very short part of the season. Yeah. He was called up pretty fast, um, as expected. Um, but yeah, just give him time. He'll adjust. He'll yeah. get he'll get in the groove. 
number one prospect for a reason, you know, at the end of the day. Yep. But we're gonna we're gonna shift into something something horrendous. Now yes. I'm I'm gonna pull this up for you guys, but while while we wait for me to to pull this up, I just want to talk about the the Mets um City Connect jerseys. That's that's what this this segment's gonna be about. Now, what I have on on your screen right now, I don't know if I could make this a little little bigger. Hope you guys like our script. Or anything, yeah. Enjoy. You can, you can just like zoom in with your two fingers, you know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. This we'll just leave it at there for now. Look, us me looking at this in general as a Mets fan this there was no care and thought put into these jerseys these are these are atrocious they're trash they're they're ass yeah they're terrible I don't know I mean the purple in general what are we doing there is no purple in the Mets colors at all I don't know why purple should is is even like a thought process when it comes to a City Connect jersey. Well, that that's a theme for these City Connect jerseys, though, right? I mean, the Phillies. I are mean, like, they're they're yeah, they could the, be the Padres have like pink and dude, stuff. but purple purple's random. No, but I, really, really random. Th- there's a reason behind it. It's something in New York. I don't remember what it was, but I remember reading it. But, there's but some reason you, behind it. You can't just put stripes on a jersey and just put NYC over the top of it and then call it call it great. That's not that's I they're they're just atrocious. They're ugly looking. The the hats you put the the bridge and then the Mets logo in the middle and then call it a day with the little little purple little top. That's that's there's no thought put into it. I would have liked to seen more of maybe like a maybe like a black and white type City Connect jersey. Um but then So again, just the Yankees? Like, no, so not, you just not you like just wanted Yankees. the Yankees no, uniform. No, no, not like the Yankees. Maybe Is there something maybe, you want to say? Maybe maybe more towards like the the blackout uniforms. I love those uniforms. So maybe like a uh, a newer model, newer version of those. But like these are just these are not it. This is not what what the doctor ordered. I mean, this is just terrible. I don't know. What, what did what the doctor you... order? Better jerseys than this. Okay, okay. I want I want I want you to express your thoughts on this because. Yeah. I think we share similar opinions. Yeah, gladly. They're ugly as hell. I think they undoubtedly are the worst City Connect jerseys I've ever seen. I cannot wait to see Pete Alonzo um, rock these on a Monday night game while he gets booed after striking out five times and then proceeds to leave for the Dodgers in the offseason. It's going to be great. I can't wait. But in all seriousness, I mean, I know there's some reasoning behind the purple. I don't remember off the top of my head. But it's I don't like it, man. I mean, the, the one thing I will say is the hat we have on the right is different from the hat that the player is wearing in the photo. It is. And by the way, mm-hmm. who is that? Do you know? I got no clue. You don't even know? You're a Mets fan? You don't know? That's... I don't even know if that's necessarily a Mets player. That might be just like a model that they that, use. I have no idea. That might just be no a male idea. model. There's yeah, no one no attractive on the is. Mets to, to pull that off. Do you agree? I, I just don't know who that is. I'm like I'm not gonna comment on that. I'm just I, I don't know who that is. I don't know if that's anybody lower in our farm mm-hmm. system. I can't imagine they get someone from like double or single A to to represent the new city connect jerseys. So it's probably my guess is a, a male model. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say I was texting um was texting a good friend of ours and I described it as a failed diamond dynasty jersey. Like I that's agree. what it looks like, and then I agree. they said, "Looks like a pajama shirt." It does kind of look like a pajama shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's shout no out, thought put put into this. Shout my, out James. You know, I don't even need. I feel like I don't need to say my friend. I think we all just know it's James. Our good boy James down. Bros no ball. Mm-hmm. Oh, not sorry. We're doing no ball. Bros no pot. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Bros no ball. I apologize. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's, I mean, I I kind of like. The hat on the right, I mean, I kind of like, but it's, it's kind of cool. But like, dude, then again, like, there's there's nothing. It's just a bridge. It's the it's the bridge with the logo. Yeah. I kind of like that. But 
then you go to the the top of the hat and they just put a pink dot or a purple dot on top. It's it's ridiculous. I don't um, understand. But the actual uniform itself, like the hat on the guy looks like the NYCFC logo, which for those that don't know is a soccer logo for New York City, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's um, self-explanatory, but I don't like it really. I mean, it's weird. I, I mean, I know that's the whole point of the City Connect jerseys that they're supposed to be like different and like out there and stuff. But um, there's there, uh, we got to find what the purple means for New York. I know there's something yeah. to it. You as a Mets fan should do some research on that. But I don't I'll, I'll bring it to later pods. Yeah, I'll, I'll it just, bring some research. Not but, great. Not not a great jersey. In yeah, my I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing for now. Cool. Um, yeah. but yeah, I dude. Ugly. Don't like it. I think they could have done a lot better than they did with it. But who knows? You know, maybe maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, later on. But we're going to move into our final topic of the night. And now this this is a big blow for our our rivals in our division. The NL East, the top of the totem pole. The. Sign of excellence, I guess you you would like to say, of the National League East. Spencer Strider is going on the IL and is going to be out for the entire 24, 2024 season. Now, this is a big blow for the Atlanta Braves. I mean, you I mean, you got guys that are struggling, you know, Charlie Morton's in the back at way back half of his career. I don't I haven't really been keeping up with how Chris Sale's been doing thus far in the season. He's been all right. He's he, he's probably been pretty decent, pretty solid. Max Fried has been terrible. I mean, he had he just came off a pretty good start giving up only like one run and getting like 4Ks against Try the, to warn the you. Marlins. Mm -hmm. But um he's been he had two terrible starts to to, to begin the season. He had like a 10 ERA to to start off the campaign, but this is a big blow for them. I mean, Strider Strider was a lot of people's favorites to to win Cy Young coming up maybe in 2024 or the following yeah. season. Mm -hmm. You know, um and they just have they have nothing. They're trying to figure out who's going to fill in that gap, who's going to fill in that void. I don't know. They're going to have to make a lot of moves in uh, during the trade deadline when when it comes time for that because I don't know how this Atlanta team is gonna suffice without them. Now their their lineup is still hands down one of the best lineups in baseball. It's so it's got so so much depth, so much star power. I mean, they and they're waiting on Sean Murphy to come back from the IL mm -hmm. as well. But Spencer Strider is a pretty big loss for for the team, and yeah. you know. You said that they were they had a pretty good start or whatever earlier on. They they've been struggling a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not and this is not a Mets bias take. This is this is a genuine take. They've been kind of struggling. Just a, just a little bit. They're not they're not off to uh the start that you know many people thought they were gonna get off to. I mean they're Win loss ratio is pretty close together. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. Could look that up for you, Matt. If you wanna, while I'm looking it up, give give your opinion on it. To look up their record? No, give up their give your opinion on on Strider. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's a big blow. I think, uh, like you said, he was a lot of people's Cy Young winner picks. I don't remember if he was my Cy Young pick for the NL. He might have been. I'd have to look back and see. Um, but one thing about the Braves is they just pump out talent, and I think that's what separates them in terms of an org an organization as opposed to other organizations is that they're just so good with it. They're they're just phenomenal with it. So I wouldn't be surprised if they call up someone or they trade for some random for cash or whatever, and that person ends up becoming one of the best pitchers in baseball. It's 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 very well possible. It, it, we it, we've seen it before. So we have seen it. If I'm the if I'm the Braves, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, I think I think you know you'll be fine, right? The year Acuna went down, and they traded for Jorge Soler, Eddie Rosario, Jock Peterson. They won the World Series, right? So I I think like I said, that's what separates the Braves from other franchises is that they're just so smart and they know what they're doing, 
and they have such a great farm system. Well, actually, they don't. They don't have a great farm system, but I think they're very good at developing guys that mm -hmm. they they will be a okay. So I mean, it it sucks. It sucks, but you know, I think the Braves at in the end will be okay. They're still a pretty young team too. They, they got are. a lot of young talent, and they're they're gonna be good for years to come. I hate that. I hate that. You hate it more. Yeah. You're a Mets fan. I, I hate it more. Yeah, I do. But speak going back to that that start that I'm talking about. Yeah, the win loss ratio is pretty close together. They are eight and five to at the moment, the time of this recording. They are eight and five to to start off the year. That's 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 not the Atlanta Braves that. People thought we're gonna they were gonna get off to the yeah. starts they were gonna get off to. Look, the division's pretty close as it sits right now. I mean, you got the Phillies who are always they could potentially win the division this year. I mean, str losing Strider is is a a pretty big deal. I mean, they they could sneakily come away with the the division. Um, and then of course you got the the Mets and Nationals at six and eight, and then the Marlins are not even a factor. They have a, they've had a terrible start to the year, and it, it's only going to get worse for them because again, they do not have Yuri Perez, they do not have Sandy, they do not have pitching, they do not have hitting. They have been terrible. They've been mm -hmm. one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in baseball. Um, so they're really a non-factor. Nationals got a young young talent too, a lot of young talent. You know, Mackenzie Gore is a great example of that young town who's continuing to develop over the years josiah gray uh kiebert ruiz bunch of bunch of great young guys cj abrams um lance thomas that, that's gonna be it's gonna be a really really good um uh, year for them they're they're pretty pretty young team did you say lance thomas did i lane thomas my bad my bad was it, is it lane thomas is it? Am, am I just blanking out right now? It it, it is Lane Thomas. It is. Yes, it's I'm Lane not, Thomas. My bad. My bad. Blanked out a little. Is bit. Is Lance Thomas the guy on the from the Lakers? I am I crazy? Know. I don't know. Oh. It is Lane Thomas. My bad. Oops. No, Oops. Lance Thomas is. He he apparently played for the Nets at some point. Oh, did you look at that? <laughs> sorry, Oops. sorry, Lance. No idea who you are. I'm sorry, Lance. Names. Lane Thomas. My bad. Oops. It's baseball season. Screw basketball. It's baseball season. Yep. Um. But yeah. Other than that, I mean, pretty close division. It's gonna see. Be interesting to see how it unfolds. Um. And again, the Braves took a massive hit this weekend. So, again, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna come for them future wise but Braves took a pretty massive hit with that that's gonna wrap up episode 17 of do no ball matt we're gonna you wanna you wanna end this off here i end this episode the way i end every episode thanks for watching <laughs>